everyone. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. Thank you for joining me for another Vlogmas video. So today I wanted to talk about what I read in 2022 and what I'm planning on reading in 2023. So nobody asked but a brief history of my relationship with reading over the years. So I learned to read extremely early in life. My dad taught me to read. He is an antique book collector. He's very into books and reading. That was like a really big part of my childhood. So growing up, I read everything all the time. I was finishing multiple books in a day sometimes. Like that was my main hobby for many years as a kid. And all of that led up to me attending St. John's College, which is a college, but really it's a glorified book club. So St. John's is a really unusual sort of program where there are no lectures, there are no exams, pretty much everything that you do for coursework is reading an original text and then coming to class to discuss it. So the amount of reading I did during college was absolutely off the rails insane. So when I graduated from St. John's in 2019, I was kind of burnt out from reading, which was very sad because I love reading. I read all the time. I used to read all the time. I think going through such a long period of intensive reading where I was reading huge quantities of things at a time and also things that I couldn't choose for myself. Like I really loved a lot of what we read during school, but it was prescribed, you know? I wasn't able to choose what I wanted to read for myself. And so I think once I finished school, I had a really long gap of just like not reading anything because I was so exhausted. So it's only really been in the last like year or so that I've tried to get back to reading at a more normal pace and also moving back towards reading the quantity of things that I would like to because there's so many things that I want to read. It's just been that I haven't had the energy or I haven't had the time. So I only read eight books in 2022. I'm hoping to read a lot more in 2023, but I just wanted to take you through some of what I read this year and reflect a little bit about it. So the first book that I finished in 2022 is a book called Love Warrior by Glennon Doyle. That's one of the only books that I don't have with me. I do have a stack of them here in front of me. So if I have the book, I will show it to you. But I read Love Warrior earlier this year. I had actually been reading this book as part of a small book club with some friends and finished it at the beginning of this year after taking a little break. So that book was my introduction to Glennon Doyle. I know that so many people really love her and I had never read anything by her before. So I read Love Warrior, which is kind of her story of going through her relationship with her husband and like all the turmoil that they went through. And it's a memoir style story, which I really love. You will notice a theme soon enough. I read a lot of memoirs this year. I love memoirs, but that was the first book that I finished this year. And then that was immediately followed by reading Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming. So this was a book that I had gotten for Christmas, like maybe a couple years ago. Alan Cumming is one of my all time favorite actors, specifically because of Cabaret. Cabaret is my all time number one, most, most favorite Broadway show, theater show, theatrical experience experience, performance, anything like that. I love Cabaret. And of course, Alan Cumming was such an integral part of that show in its various stages, revivals, all of that stuff. So I really wanted to read this book for a long time. It's a memoir as well. And it's about his experience growing up in a pretty abusive household. He had a lot of problems with his father and a lot of the book focuses on his biological paternity and whether he was truly his father's son biologically, how his relationship with his childhood is growing up. And also it kind of goes back and forth between the time that he was filming this show called Who Do You Think You Are? where he was like going around the world, visiting historical sites where his family had lived in the past and whatnot. So I really enjoyed reading this. It was really cool to see a closer look at his life and childhood. He had a really tough childhood. And I think the book is also pretty funny. Like Alan Cumming is a funny guy. There's a lot of his humor and dark humor sort of inserted into it. You guys, it is literally so loud outside right now. I'm like fighting for my life, trying to film this video in between all of the loud, like trucks driving by and sirens and construction going on outside. I'm so sorry if you can hear it. I'm just gonna keep pushing through. I'm sorry in advance if you hear any of these noises in the background. There's nothing I can do. I've been like trying to work around it and I'm just, I need to get this video up. So we're just gonna keep going. So after that, I read this book called Eating in the Light of the Moon. And the subtitle is How Women Can Transform Their Relationships with Food Through Myths, Metaphors, and Storytelling. So this is an excellent book. It was recommended to me by my nutritionist and I actually read it in a book club with other clients with my nutritionist. 
So it was a great experience. I got to meet some other girls around my age who also struggle with eating disorders. It was very healing for us to read this together and discuss it together. So if you have an eating disorder, I highly, highly recommend checking this book out. I thought it was really impactful to the way that I view myself and my history with eating. The chapters in this book, I think a lot of them speak for themselves. So there's like the woman spirit, addiction, symbolism, feelings, relationships, power, intuition, sexuality, nourishment, all kinds of stuff like that. And each chapter is kind of made to go along with a myth or a story. So there are these myths taken from all different cultures and they kind of explain like the historic significance, there's a retelling of the myth, and then throughout the chapter they talk about how that myth and idea can relate to some concept around eating. I was initially a little bit hesitant to read this book because it was a little bit too like spiritual for me, but I really really liked it and like I said I highly recommend reading this if you have an eating disorder. Next up we were back to Glennon Doyle. I read her book Untamed, which I think is one of her biggest releases that she's done. I guess, I mean it says on the cover of the book, New York Times Best seller for a love warrior so she is going up in her career also fun fact i learned i can't remember if it was in this book or in love warrior but i learned that glennon doyle like grew up and went to high school and stuff in my town where i'm from so there's a lot of times in these books where she'll mention something about like her childhood or like the high school she went to and like i know exactly what she's talking about which is kind of cool but i really enjoyed reading untamed as well this is a book that's more like smaller essays or like smaller conceptual ideas so when i was reading this i was mostly reading it like every night before bed i would read like one or two of the shorter stories and this book really kind of expands on like a lot of the topics and themes that were in love warrior so it's like very personal to her kind of like confessional style writing stories and things that she's experienced and this book also goes through her meeting her now wife after her divorce her relationships with her children as they grow up like i just just, I really liked reading it and the cover is beautiful. Well done to whoever designed this. After that I read Amanda Palmer's memoir called The Art of Asking. I have had this book for probably 10 years or 8 years or something since it came out. I ordered a signed copy when it came out. So there is a signature. Pretty cool. But I've had this sitting on my shelf for so long and I never actually read it. So that's kind of what I was trying to do. At the end of this year and then also going into next year is I want to just like read some books that have been sitting around for a while but I loved reading this. Amanda Palmer did a TED talk which I can link down below called The Art of Asking about how she moved towards this model of pay what you want and letting her fans take her music for free and like pay the amount that they wanted to pay, getting away from her record label who she hated, and just kind of that whole experience and relationship that she built with her fans and how that has really impacted her career and made her as successful as she is because she never really like sold out, you know, like she's tried to maintain this really close, honest friendship with her fan base, which is really hard to do, especially as you become a bigger and bigger artist. But I really love this book. It also goes through a lot of her relationship with Neil Gaiman, which is kind of sad now because they just recently announced that they are divorcing. But yeah, it just gives you a much better look at like her childhood, her experience growing up. Also, she talks a lot more in depth about her experience as a living statue, which was kind of the basis for the TED Talk. So I enjoyed reading this, kind of similar to the Alan Cumming book. I think it's really interesting to read memoirs and stories from people that you're already a fan of and you already know about them professionally. It's really interesting to get a more more personal look at their personal life. And the spine of this book is a little chewed up on the dust jacket. I have my kitten to thank for that. Next up, I read a novel, which is something I have been staying away from, having a little bit of a hard time getting back into novels, especially like I said, after all the years of St. John's, but I wanted to read a novel. So I read Blindness by Jose Saramago. This is something that I originally read probably when I was in like maybe seventh or eighth grade. Honestly, probably a little bit too young to be reading something like this, but I reread it this year and it's been taking me forever to actually finish this book because I've had so much other stuff going on. But I talked about this a little bit in my September monthly favorites video, which I will link up here if you want to hear more about it. But basically just to give you a summary, this book is about a sudden epidemic of white blindness that strikes an entire city and it's spreading rapidly. Eventually everyone who has gone blind is quarantined in the abandoned hospital and everything kind of goes to chaos from there. Really really interesting story. The writing style in this is really interesting. There's not a lot of punctuation and like kind of an unusual way of doing dialogue and all of that sort of stuff. So 
I really like this book. Highly recommend if you've never read it. It came out in the 90s, I think, so this has been out for a while, but I reread it this year and I really enjoyed it. Also, I forgot to mention, I read Designing Your Life this year. This is literally just the dust jacket because I lent this book to a friend, so I just have the dust jacket, but this is another kind of like self-help-ish book that goes through mostly like career. Like it's really good if you're contemplating a career change or if you're trying to build your career and do work-life balance, which is something that I've always struggled with. So this kind of takes you through some exercises of basically how to design the life that you want to be living. And I thought this was also super, super helpful. And lastly, our friend Intuitive Eating. I just talked about this video in my December monthly favorites, which I will again link up here if you want to go watch that. But I love this book. My nutritionist again recommended this to me. This is kind of like the basis for intuitive eating practices, which is what my nutritionist style is like and this has helped me so much with reformulating my thinking about my eating disorder and my relationship with food i highly recommend reading this if you have any problems with eating even if you don't have an eating disorder but if you've just done a lot of like dieting and like negative relationship with food check this book out i really think everyone should read this i think it would help you a lot it kind of takes you through like the different stages and the different steps towards redefining your relationship with food so for example getting rid of the idea that certain foods are good or bad or that they have different value if you can start looking at all food as just neutral food and you eat what you want to eat when you want to eat it when you are intuitively called to eat that thing you can train yourself to follow your body's cues and just kind of naturally go back to eating a more balanced even diet because your body knows how to do that like i said i love this book i think it's helped me a lot i've actually not quite finished with it but i'm gonna keep reading it through the end of the year okay now i want to talk quickly about a couple books that i want to read in 2023 again some of them i have here some of them i don't a couple of these I've asked for for Christmas, so hopefully I will have a physical copy in a couple of weeks. But the first thing on this list is a book called Wintering, The Power of Rest and Retreat During Difficult Times by Catherine May. This is another pretty self-help-esque book, but I have heard that this is really good. I think reading this in wintertime is probably really nice. And from what I understand, it just kind of takes you through why taking rest and taking breaks is so important for mental health and also for productivity. Another book that I really want to read, I've been wanting to read this like since it came out and I've just not been able to get my hands on it and then I kind of forgot about it, but I really really want to read I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Everyone I know who has read this book has loved it so much. They've said it's so funny. It's so impactful. So that is one that I definitely asked for for Christmas. I really hope that I'm getting that book for Christmas. If not, I will be buying it because I'm super excited to read it. I've seen a lot of interviews and stuff with her promoting this book and talking about this book. I read some excerpts from it and it just looks absolutely excellent. So I'm really excited to read that this year. Another book I'm looking forward to reading is a book called Fair Play by Eve Rodsky. I actually heard of this book through the Financial Diet podcast. So the author was a guest on a recent episode of the Financial Diet podcast. And she talked a lot about this book and some of the anecdotes that are in it. And I am super interested in reading this, not only as an individual, but I feel like this will be very helpful for future relationships because it's really all about like how to achieve equal balance in your home, especially among partners and doing things like house chores and childcare and all of that sort of thing. So I'm really looking forward to reading that. The podcast episode that she was on, the title was something about like the adult toddler husband problem, which is something I've been seeing all over social media. It's really irritating to me. So I'm glad that people are talking about this and I'm really excited to read her take on solving problems like this. Uh, another book that I want to read in 2023, which I have here with me because I read it before, is Walk Through Walls by Marina Abramovich. I read this maybe like two years ago. I think I read it in 2020. And this is Marina's memoir. If you guys have watched my channel before, you know she's one of my favorite artists. I have a tattoo of her portrait. And I love reading this book whenever I read it. I thought it was super, super inspiring. She's one of my all-time favorite artists. She's absolutely incredible. So I just wanna spend some more time rereading this book, thinking about her story and her life again, and just kind of getting reinvigorated towards my creativity this year. Also, Marina offers these workshops that take place in Greece. They're kind of exclusive, they're kind of expensive, and I actually applied to do it in 2021 and I was offered a spot, but I wasn't able to make it work with my schedule and my finances. So 
For 2023, I'm gonna start saving money to do one of these retreats, and hopefully I can do that in 2024. I think it would be really amazing. So yes, this year I wanna spend more time with Marina and start thinking more about my creative life, performances, all of that sort of stuff. Next, another theater-related book, The Berlin Stories by Christopher Isherwood. I have also read this before quite a while ago. This book is the inspiration for the stage musical Cabaret, which I already mentioned I absolutely love. So The Berlin Stories is actually two different short stories. One is called Mr. Norris Changes Trains and the other one is Goodbye to Berlin and these together really served as the inspiration for Cabaret. It's about Christopher Isherwood's experience living in Berlin in the early 1930s and this is fictional but it is kind of based on true events so I've also read this book before but I'm super excited to read it again. I actually got this particular copy of this book during Cabaret's run on Broadway in 2014. They were doing a bunch of giveaways on their Instagram and I won this book. It's one of the only things that I've ever won in a giveaway. Next, in the spirit of reading things that have been sitting on my shelf for a long time, I really want to read this book called Shakespeare After All by Marjorie Garber. This is a huge thick book of essays that are all Shakespeare related. So she goes through each one of Shakespeare's plays and pulls out lots of different insights and details and things that I would love to spend more time thinking about. I really want to spend more time with Shakespeare in the new year. So I would like to read this book and I think maybe when I read this book I'm going to try to bounce back and forth between reading her chapter on each play and then reading the play as well. I have a full collection of the Shakespeare Folger Library edition, so I have them all in the other room. And I'm really excited to just spend more time with Shakespeare, get back into that, try to also start working on some theater and plays in the Philly community this year, and I feel like maybe this will help inspire me towards that. And lastly, another book that I've read before but love so much, Dante's Inferno. I really want to read this again. I wanted to read it this year around Halloween time, and then I just had too much going on in life to do that, but I do want to read Inferno, at least Inferno. Ideally, I would like to to read the trilogy again but we'll see how much time I have. I I just love Dante. I wrote one of my annual essays at St. John's about Dante. I love Dante. I love these illustrations that are on the cover of this. These are done by Gustave Doré. I have a couple of these as tattoos and I don't know I love it so much. I want to read it in a more like personal context, private context because when I read it before it was in an academic context of course and then I wrote my paper about it so I was doing all of this like intensive work on it but I want to read it again just more like freely you know. So those are all the books that I have to show you. I'm sure that there's tons of other stuff that I want to read. I have a big list on Goodreads of everything that's like per in the back of my head but these are the ones I wanted to highlight these are like the highest on my priority list of what I want to read this coming year let me know what you guys have been reading what was your favorite book that you read this year and what are you reading in 2023 I would love to know so leave me a comment down below and until next time thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in another video bye